Good morning, everybody. This is another Saturday Walking Reflections and so happy to be able to do this. It's kind of cooling down now in Los Angeles, but it's still like in the 80s, in the middle of October. So I'm just savoring every moment that I can spend outdoors and I can't wait for really the fall weather, right? Although we don't get the real fall season here in California, we take advantage of the amazing temperate weather. So, you know, I've been thinking a lot lately about something I'm sure many of you can relate. Feeling tired. I don't know if it's just about age or lack of exercise, but sometimes I feel like I always say I didn't get enough sleep, you know, or I'm in deeper fatigue. And sometimes that lingers no matter how much rest you get, right? The one that creeps into your body and makes everything feel just a little heavier. Yeah, I know, it's been a struggle for me forever. So you know the feeling, right? You start the day with a to-do list longer than your arm, but by mid-afternoon, you find yourself on the couch, scrolling mindlessly or reaching for another cup of coffee. I've been there more often than what I actually need. And the question that keeps popping into my head, and maybe yours too, is why am I so tired? <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to pan into some of the Halloween decorations of our neighbors. Really interesting. And the chirping birds and the trees. So whether it's the constant demands of work, family, or just trying to keep up with life, fatigue can really, you know, sneak up on us, right? So for some, it's mental, you know, endless stress or worry. But for others, it's physical. Our bodies just feel drained. But no matter the cause, it can be hard to shake off. Gosh, beautiful sunshine. And it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. So take my own routine, for example, right? I find energy and peace when I'm out in the garden or in doing morning walks, which I'm only able to do once a week. Digging into soil, seeing the plants grow, it's therapeutic for me. But what happens when it's time to extend, you know, that energy into other parts of my life, like exercising regularly or keeping up with these Saturday walks. That's when the challenge hits, right? So I'm curious, what drains your energy? The number one thing or two. And on the flip side, what recharges you? I wanna hear, let me know in your comments. So let's go to what experts say about fatigue. They say fatigue isn't just about how much sleep we're getting, sure, you know, that's important, but they've found it also comes from things like stress, poor diet, lack of movement, or even emotional exhaustion. I mean, think about how tired you feel after a rough day at work or a tough conversation. It's exhausting, right? I just love the architecture around here. So different, like a mixture of so many different things. Like this house over here, they have their own tennis courts. And the house here has mid-century modern. Anyway, so instead about taking small mindful steps forward, building momentum, have you ever noticed how once you start something, like a workout, it's easier to keep going? It's that starting part that's tough, in my opinion. So let's talk about a few things that we can do to find and sustain energy in our everyday lives. So one, find your energy sources. So for me, that's gardening or walking. But for you, it might be spending time with loved ones, cooking, and even reading. Whatever it is, lean into it even if it's just for a few minutes each day. The second one is get moving. It's kind of obvious, right? I know, easier said than done, but movement really does build energy. Even a simple walk like the one I'm doing right now. It can make a huge difference. It's about consistency, not intensity, right? Big difference. And maybe these walking reflections for me, but for you, it could be a quick walk around the block. The third one, break the cycle of overwhelm. Sometimes we get so caught up in everything we need to do that it feels paralyzing. That's a scary clown over there. That's when fatigue hits the hardest. Instead, try to focus on one small task at a time. When we break it down, things feel more manageable and we regain energy. And let's not forget about gratitude. One of the easiest ways to shift out of feeling tired is to think about something, anything you're thankful for. You know, it doesn't have to be big. Maybe it's just a perfect cup of coffee you had this morning, or you woke up and you don't feel as uncomfortable, <laughs> or the fact that you got to wake up to another day without any ailments or difficulties, right? For me, like smelling the morning breeze, 
feeling the heat of the morning sun. So many things to be thankful for. So here's my challenge to you this week. Take a few moments each day to do something that recharges you, whether it's stepping outside, taking a few deep breaths, or even writing down three things you're grateful for. I'm sure you'll find three. And let me know how it goes in the comments. I'd love to hear what works for you. And as I walk these paths each Saturday, I remind myself that life is about balance. We all have days when we're running on empty, but we also have the ability to refill ourselves in small, meaningful ways. It's all about being mindful and intentional. So I'll leave you with this. It's a thought from Oprah, the friend of the world, who once said, the more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. So let's celebrate the little victories, the small moments of energy, and the progress we make, no matter how small. Thanks again for joining me in this Saturday morning walk. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to be able to do this with you all. And I'm grateful for you and know that deep inside, you're doing something right every single day. And that's something to be grateful for. Peace and blessings. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more.